Morning breaks and it's the first day of Ramadan. What was once a period of reflection for the evacuees who fled from Marawi, now it feels like a time of great uncertainty. It is not how they imagined life would be. They left their home in haste, leaving everything that they worked hard for behind. Now, many of them live in evacuation camps like this one across nearby provinces in the southern Philippines. How is your situation here? We asked. It is a life of indignity, one of them told us. Sumaya Limpao escaped from Marawi while she was in labor. She gave birth in a medical center near the camp. I am afraid my boy will die here. Look at the situation here. He is so small and I am scared. The Philippine military is battling around 60 members of the Maute, a local armed group that has pledged allegiance to ISIL. We traveled to the heart of Marawi. Its streets have now become a battleground. We're now embedded with state forces as they get to one of those areas cleared and recently recovered by the Philippine military. Um, even if the areas are mostly cleared, there are still snipers positions everywhere, so um, we're told to basically walk briskly but also prepared to run the to We just had a little encounter here. Um, there are reports that most of the rebels are holed up in just one area. But from where we are, it seems as though around half of it is not yet fully cleared. There was also a breakdown of leadership. Most of the government officials here have either fled or their facilities taken over by fighters. So they are reorganizing. I need to encourage everyone, especially the LGUs, to speak up and at the same time to step up their initiatives in supporting the security operation, the clearing operation, and at the same time, at most, is the humanitarian uh, consideration. Most of the residents here are gone, but the streets are a testament to just how much their lives have been interrupted by the violence. Jamela Lindogan, Al Jazeera, Marawi City, Southern Philippines.